Welcome to HITC's board, and yeah. I'm back. I feel like I've said that a lot this year. But alright, cracking into it. Does anyone think 2019 has been a bit dull? I mean, this time last year, we'd already had Logan Paul film someone hanging from a tree. Effectively slicing through the bank accounts of YouTubers worldwide, and forcing us to shelve our dreams of living anywhere that didn't smell like the inside of a bread bin. So by contrast, it's been a fairly quiet opening week. Or at least that's what it felt like for me, considering I spent it coughing up a lung and weeping into my pillow. But no, apparently it's been brought to my attention that a few footballers have been messing up a little bit. And you know, there's been people generally making a holy show of themselves. Alright, kicking it off. Remember Andres Iniesta, everybody's favourite Spanish World Cup winner? actually think he'd be involved in something like a blackface scandal? I mean, let's be honest, if anyone in that room needed to pop out a bit of fake tan, it was probably the lad with the World Cup medal. Considering for the past 30 years, he sported the pigment of someone who had to step down their front door since 1996. So basically, half of Ninja's subscribers. Like, who were those clowns at the back, and how on earth did Iniesta think this would be a good idea? Does he not remember the amount of grief Antoine Griezmann got? It's 2019, lads. You can't just slap on a bunch of charcoal and pretend you're a black person. It is called blackface. Well, I mean, do what you want, but just be prepared to be branded a racist and possibly you get punched in the goddamn face. I mean, if you want to slap on a bit of fake tan, go for it. The trend has been set by some absolute icons of this generation. Crystal Palace keeper denies making Nazi salute. Oh god, this is not going to end well for him. I just love the contrasting parallels of banter at this dinner table. Julian Speroni is getting a couple of bunny ears thrust above his head, sitting next to Hennessy, who looks like he's about to launch into the first epitaph of the f***ing Reichstag. It's almost as if someone got out their phone, and everyone just sort of thought, oh shit, gotta do something funny. Bunny ears for Speroni and uh, a full-on tribute to exterminator of six million Jews. I mean, the lad who posted the picture was Max Meyer. He just happens to be a blonde-haired and blue-eyed German. Essentially, the human embodiment of a Hitler wet dream. So, it doesn't look great. Well, if Wayne Hennessy didn't have the YouTube Red series before, he sure as hell not getting one now. Ah! <laughs> Being a Fulham fan these days is probably about as much fun as shoving your head in a microwave on a daily basis. I mean, the lads that they have at the back should probably be made to face trial under the Trades Description Act. Because not one of them is a goddamn defender. Cyrus Christie, more like Christie Brown. And and that's not a, it's not a racist thing, that's it's the little kid off of my left foot. And, and again, that's, that's not a jab at disabled people, because being honest lads, you'd probably do a better job at right back yourselves. My point is that Cyrus Christie is god awful. But anyway, the Cosmers lost at home to Oldham in the FA Cup. Midgerich missed a penalty, costing Jimmy Blythe 10, 855 quid. Thanks Alexander Mitrovic, only 855 quid for missing the pen. No problem mate, he just doesn't care. I mean why should he, he probably spends half that on a quick Sunday brunch. Ment lost out on 855 pounds. He's trying to tap into his, he's trying to tap into Mitrovic's soft side there. Yes I know. <laughs> Note the passive aggressive thumbs up in every message exchanged. Are thumbs up the new middle finger? I think I hate this man. No, not the gargoyle on the left. This preening, pulsating, salt bay brilliant. We all remember this fella. He's the guy who thought it appropriate to drag Salah into a selfie, despite the Egyptian looking like a girl who's just been dumped at her grad ball. I mean, could he not cut the meat without looking like he's about to show it the night of its life? Anyway, that is a big ass steak covered in gold. Frank Ribery came under so much fire for that. You know, considering children are literally starving to death every day in Syria. He had a response. Let's start with the jealous, the haters. Those only born because a condom had a hole in. Hey, my dad used a Snickers wrapper. Didn't work. My success is above all thanks to God, me, and my loved ones who believed in me. For the others, you're nothing but pebbles in my socks. Hmm. What about the underage hooker you cheated on your wife with? Is she? Is she just another pebbler? You know, just an unsavory footnote in your career that you just wish the rest of us would forget about. Look, on one hand, I get where he's coming from. It's his money, it's his bank account, and he should be able to go out and gorge himself on a steak as big as his head without having 50 photos of starving Syrian children plastered all over his Twitter. I mean, lads, if you go out and buy a pair of Yeezys, do you really want half your timeline to show you the sweatshop in which they were made? Having said that, pebbles in my socks. No, these people are the reason you have money, you absolute clampus. Without fans, you'd just be some unemployed lad leeching off the system because you honest to God look too terrifying to even be given a job working behind the counter at a petrol station. There's a bit of 
managerial beef at the moment, with Sam Allardyce piping up in between mouthfuls of Greg's pasties, to criticise Marco Silva's style of coaching, which is a bit like hanging around your ex-wife's house and shouting advice in the window at the new fella on how to last longer. I mean, it just comes off as salty. Silva said this, Okay, maybe if it is David Moyes I would listen because he did something really important at this club, but in this case, it is not important at all. Now, don't get me wrong, the more people who tell Big Sam to shut up in life, the better. But be careful, Marco, because it does remind me of this. Neil Warnock uh, uh, was the manager here, um, and he didn't do very well, so not really interested in his opinion. Two years later, and Warnock is sitting comfortably in the Premier League, while Pardew no doubt spends his weekends down the local nightclub, chatting up the fresh skirt. That's what I love about high school girls. I keep getting older, they stay the same age. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. Netflix is a wonderful little refuge to visit when nobody will speak to you and your family have completely disowned you. So I'm guessing KSI binged three series on Christmas Day. Alongside the Vander Snatches, Bird Boxes and Big Bang Theory is Sunderland Till I Die, the eternal capture of the club's demise last season. The filmmakers probably couldn't believe their luck. Two sackings, relegation, players genuinely not caring and Darren Gibson treating the season as if it was a nine month piss up. I wonder what Newcastle fans must have made of that. Let's, let's, let's get a Geordie's opinion on the matter. Oh yes, him. How I had missed him so. Look, I'm the biggest thing from Newcastle since f***ing Anton Deck, baby. I'm a f***ing superstar. You're an idiot. It's better for them this time out. Sun under third in League One. And look at that, they have a derby. I mean, they kind of just admitted the fact that it's their first team against Newcastle's under 21s. Which is essentially like pining after your ex-girlfriend and having to settle with taking your little sister out on a date. It's like smarting over a failed boxing fight and then begging for a rematch with his pot little brother. I mean, this is essentially lose-lose. If they win, it's, oh, congrats Lee Catamol. You just beat up a bunch of kids. You could have done that down the local Tesco car park like the rest of us. And if they lose, <laughs> if they lose, Good God, this man will be wooing for days. The son of the first team against Newcastle's kids. Thank Christ Adam Johnson no longer plays for them. Let's have a quick look at the transfer news surrounding Chelsea. I mean, as weeks go by, uh, Alvaro Morata will probably get put up for sale on Amazon or eBay or just left in a wooden box outside the local fire station, no questions asked. Either way, a Bayern Munich are trying to sign Chelsea star Callum Hudson-Odoi for £30 million, which is almost as bizarre as John Malkovich agreeing to star in a movie alongside Machine Gun Kelly. But yeah, Hudson-Odoi, I mean, I don't know what it is with the rise of the double barrel names. Probably due to the rise of having kids out of wedlock. Christ, lads, the Catholic Church are probably having a hernia. Aside from, of course, covering up their heinously criminal offences. But yeah, lads, I swear to God, in five years' time, you're going to be out of breath before you even finish reading the England team sheet. To be honest, if I was Hudson-Odoi, I'd go. Chelsea is a breeding ground for dead careers. For Christ's sake, Ruben Loftus cheek has been there for 15 years. Nobody at the club seemed to think Kevin De Bruyne or Salah were worth holding on to. They've also signed Christian Pulisic. I mean, that's what they do. They just throw money. They don't look inside their own club. What else? Uh, Mourinho has turned on Benfica. Uh, I had to say that is an absolute insult to even offer him the job. Look, I don't care what happened to Man United. I don't care how many times you make Pogba cry in the dressing room. I don't care if you call Luke Shaw a burger enthusiast. This is Jose Mourinho. He left Portuguese football behind a long time ago. But speaking of Portuguese icons, why does Ronaldo look like some posh teenager whose father paid for Anthony Joshua to turn up to his 15th birthday? Right, remember how much we all loved football diss tracks? <sighs> well, they're back. This is Fogden, some Bolden supporter. I was apparently sitting for a Burnley one, so I just got over a week long flip. This is just gonna send me straight back to bed, I'd say. Let's have a look. I mean, so are Bolton, so it's kind of just, <laughs> kind of leveled out there. Next year we'll see you in the championship. You made it into Europe and you didn't do bits, you just became the first team to leave it. Uh, again, I mean, Bolton haven't been to Europe for about a decade, so it's just, again, uh, You worked at McDonald's for two and a half years to serve me a Big Mac and fries. Cheers! Right, so let me get this straight. Is this privileged young man basically saying that anyone who makes a living from a fast food restaurant is some kind of ethereal pond scum that doesn't even deserve to share the same life space as him? If that's the case, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. You're like Horrid Henry meets Postman Pat. You diss the A because they can't send back, but now you're getting roasted by a man with a plaque. Oh, I hate this kid. <laughs> yeah. Burnley's a shithole. Admit that. You're all inbred, 
<laughs> Alright, see this is the problem with this tracks. We get annoying kids who hold up YouTube plaques as if it's a form of valuable currency in the world, penning rap songs, presumably on the back of a Peppa Pig poster, when they can't even spell the word inbred. <laughs> it's an easy word. This inbred. This Inbred. Anyway, that's all I got time for today, lads. Did I miss anything? Oh yeah, Paul Pogba took his dog for a walk. Apparently, the sun deems that of uh, interest to the human population. But then again, the sun also thought spreading lies about dead Liverpool fans was good crack. Anyway, if you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like, share, and subscribe. And to any viewers out there that are thinking of inflating more distracts on the world, no bother, lads. It's it, it's all good, honestly. Anyway, as always, I'll talk to you in a while.